Welcome back to the Real Sim Engagement. Before I jump into our second segment, let me remind you guys, if you ever miss any of the MLG content, everything we do here from the MLG Winter Championships, from all the WCS content, Winter Exhibition, qualifying tournaments for both WCS and our MLG Championship events, Rules of Engagement, Top 5s, Top 10s, comments of the day, it's all available on our YouTube site, youtube.com slash official MLGSE2 for free and 10 ADP content. So if you ever don't see a live stream, you ever miss a show, go ahead and check out the YouTube channel. It's all up there in great quality for free. Our next segment of the day is going to be a match again from yesterday's WCS America Premier League Round 32 group stage. Group number E, of course, is going to be um, Apocalypse versus Phoenix. And uh, the, a couple things we want to look at here is going to be the TVT matchup when you're talking about Bio versus Mech. And uh, I want to focus on uh, basically, first of all, defending uh, Reaper aggression, but also any type of heavy aggression early on. Then we're going to move on to talking about um, basically the the consequences of delaying your expansions for your tech play, and then uh, also one of the difficulties of playing Mech and TVT, and something you really got to keep an eye out for. So we're going to jump into this uh, replay, starting at the uh, 5:30 mark, and we're going to look at this through Phoenix's point of view. So of course he. Uh, he sees the Reaper Rush, and what's the first thing he does? Anytime you have to defend an opponent who has a superior army from you, if it's a Blink Stalker all in, and in PVT, or in this case, four Reapers versus two, the way to minimize SCV losses, right, is to not fight with your first units. It's to actually make sure your SCVs tank the damage. It, it's a weird oxymoronic thing. It's, it's like, or that's not even the right word, sorry. Um, it, it's a weird type of thing that a lot of people don't understand, but. The, the, the faster you pull SCVs, the quicker you get SCVs into the battle, the less you use, the less you lose. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. People are like, no, if I pull SCVs, I'll lose them. You'll lose less if you pull them earlier. And the reason why that was so important there to pull the SCVs early is because you notice how fast did he drive away Apocalypse, right? Apocalypse's Reapers, they, they only got a couple shots off and they left. They only killed uh, three workers total. One of those was a scout, so only two workers in that engagement. Why was that true? It was true because he made sure that those two SVs who died, they died before any of his Reapers or Hellions died. Which meant that he didn't lose any of his damage dealing units. If you don't lose any of your damage dealing units, you'll do a lot of damage and you'll kill your opponent's forces and they'll have to run away. So even though you're, you'll, you'll lose a couple workers right off the bat, you'll drive your opponent away faster and you won't be able to return because you have so much damage output that of course you won't lose any more workers down the road. So that's the best way to minimize his SCV losses. Get rid of their attack as fast as possible, making sure you don't lose any of your important damage healing units. So uh, now, of course, we can see both players. You know, Apocalypse is, of course, expanding behind that. Phoenix is expanding as well. Uh, Phoenix with a slight lead, and he's actually going into mech play. And what's interesting about the way he does mech play, as we go forward in this, so we can open up the production tab. And notice something. He's kind of delaying his third CC a bit, but this is actually normal. It's not delayed yet. But going forward, uh, what's really interesting that he does is, uh, you know, three barracks before the CC isn't rare at all. But what is rare is is both first getting to armory this fast is it, it, kind of unusual for mech play, and getting the pre igniter upgrade. That's that's said so armory is a, you know minerals and gas being spent before mech. The upgrade on, on, on the mech attack is minerals and gas spent before the third CC. The pre igniter's upgrade is more resources before the third CC. And then, of course, the uh, transformation servos is more. So he's, I mean, his CC is just started now. But all this delaying before his third CC, we can see, uh, it could have been easily done by now. What that does is if you're going to basically prioritize getting that tech up over an expansion, what you need to do is then go back into replay and ask yourself, did I gain significant value from having that tech earlier? Was it worth having a significantly more food count because of less economy, uh, less army, etc. And, and then you have to see, okay, so if, if you're Phoenix, you're evaluating this replay. Okay, how much was he able to kill due to blue flame? Uh, it, it's hard to tell there. Maybe I got one or two more SCVs and it wouldn't have gone without blue flame. Right, uh, what about over here? Maybe one or two more as well. Maybe not. Maybe actually would have gotten the same amount. Um, it, it actually, it, it's, it's three shots of blue flame, four shots of red flame. So it's not the hugest difference. And the transformation servers, how, how important are those? How important was that plus one weapons? Uh, how do all these things kind of affect my ability to take out the workers versus the fact that I have a substantially slower expansion, my opponent's already mining, so uh, how much extra damage do I have to do to make it worth it? 
Uh, and and then you look at those games you know, and maybe you'll modify your, your decision in future. So in this case, it wasn't exactly clear whether or not taking that fast was worth it. But it's one thing to know to evaluate, not just saying, oh, Blue Flame was good. I killed two extra workers. That's not the correct attitude. You should be thinking, was killing those two extra workers from Blue Flame worth as much as I spent on this upgrade? And if I wanted to get the upgrade anyway, was it worth the difference of getting the upgrade before my third expansion? How much did that, how much, uh, did that hurt me economically as well? And then you can look in the time. Okay, it cost me 30 seconds. 30 seconds of mining is 400 minerals, whatever it is, um, depending on how many SUVs you have. You gotta do the math and figure out maybe you should adjust your build in the future. Um, but going forward now, we're at a full blown mech first power situation. Both players three base versus three base. And now we can get into the difficulty of playing mech. So mech is very immobile, right? Because it's immobile, it's very hard to respond to attacks. Because it's hard to respond to attacks quickly, you wanna make sure either you don't have to respond to attacks. He doesn't have to respond to drops in the main because he's got a sensor tower, so he'll see him coming. He's got uh, a factory out here. And he's got a, a turrets all over here as well, right? So he doesn't have to respond to drops in the main. That, that, that makes him very safe from that way. He only has to worry about these two spots. Now, he's building a, a sensor tower over here. So I'll plenty of time if he sees a large army heading this way. He can just move his tanks down. He'll have plenty of time to respond to a threat. Attacking directly at third base as well. I mean, maybe ideally even uh, a, sensor or a missile turret or two in the back. But I, I think he'll be fine with these tanks as they are here as well. But the one thing he's missing, if you look at these, uh, uh, the lines of these uh, sensor towers, is without this helling here, he doesn't have that sky information in front of his natural to know how to respond to attack from his natural. So the sensor towers are great, scouting units are great too, and right now he's perfect. But he can't afford to move this helling, because if you look, at, look through Phoenix's viewpoint, mechs and mobile, you have to have that early warning. You have to have the early warning available, or else uh, you can get caught off guard and be in big trouble. If he moves his Helling, he will no longer have the early warning in this section, and all of a sudden he moves it. And now we're in a situation where, okay, you know, the, the drop school is doing good damage, but he has nothing to defend this natural way. In fact, he doesn't see it until just now. Apocalypse is heading right there, just not a sense of tower sees it. Ideally, he would have seen it when it was over here. So maybe he can't control the watchtower at this point, but uh, having, you know, a unit here, or having another sensor tower here, or, or a floating barracks, put your floating barracks right here, Something that'll give you even 10 more squares of vision is four more get seconds for you know most most of the armies, and those four seconds could mean sieging these tanks up, right? Tank siege mode is four seconds. So right now, even if he starts it right now, it's already kind of too late. Units have already gone close. But without that siege mode, of course, he can't defend his choke point very well. And, and as soon as the, the bio army starts trading well with the mech army, then you're always in a situation where, yes, he's going to eventually hold this off because he's you know he's got a, a tank up on the high ground there. He reset his rallies, but. He's losing an orbital command. He's losing a lot of SCVs. He's losing a lot of his key mech units here. And even if he can rebuild this third, he can't ever take out a fourth. He's never gonna have a chance to move out and take a fourth because his tank on is have reset that he can't cover all his zones uh, and move out to a fourth for quite a long time. So we can see that the consequences of it right here, fast forwarding within another minute or two, you know, losing all, all the third, losing all the SCVs, uh, all of a sudden right here, Nothing else has happened, 19 minutes. He's down by 70 supply, right? So 173 food to 107 food, not where you want to be. And it's all just because that slight mistake, he had the Helling Scout there and he moved it, he missed that attack coming. So super, super important. One, against an early attack that it, their army is much stronger than yours, but of course you have an economic advantage, theoretically. If their army is stronger, you better have economic advantage or you've been out macroed. Uh, pull SCVs. Sooner rather than later, it's there. A Zerg and Protoss is a little bit different because uh, you don't have high damage, low life range units that can hide behind the workers. Um, but at least it's Terran. Blink soccer all in. You should not be losing Marines unless your opponent, you may, your opponent better be macro like a god to focus Marines over SCVs uh, if you're losing Marines. Otherwise, your first six unit deaths should be SCVs. And by then, you have to blink away. Then by the time they blink cooldown again, you have enough Marines and tanks that they can't even uh, get in there and do anything before they have to run away. So, same thing with Reapers, right? Pull the SVs fast with Reapers so you don't lose your Reapers, and then having your Reapers alive will force their Reapers to leave no longer do damage. But it was really, really important here, of course. So it came down to it. Difficulty to play mech. You have to have insane map vision. Because your army is immobile, sensor towers, missile turrets, scouting is so important. All it takes is one mistake with mech and you can lose, and that's why, of course, a lot of people think mech's bad. It's because it's very difficult to play. You get punished very hard for a mistake. Uh, so 
that's really what decided the game there. And uh, when you're playing mech, try to make sure always, always, always have that great map vision and flying barracks, whatever it takes to get that vision to give you that few extra seconds of reaction time to re-siege, reposition your units. So that's up analysis of uh, this segment. We'll take a short break and be right on to segment number three.